this year I think I'm more there for people. I try to help everybody on the team to be the best versions of themselves. And if I see someone having a bad day, I just remind them like what good came out of that day and just how great they are. I think that she started in that leading by example role. You know, she was always early to wait. She always pushed herself 110%. Being a great teammate, I think, is super important to her. I think once she realized how powerful that is, uh, just the, the type of gravitas that she has, I think she was able to start to own it and, and vocally lead. It started off as being just a fun program for, you know, something to just have her go out and do and get some exercise. I actually, would go to gymnastics when my sister would go to physical therapy for her hip. It's called leg calf perthes. The bone in your hip, I guess the blood flow gets cut off and the bone dies and doesn't grow. After the procedure, she was in two casts that her legs were like in a straddle position with a bar in the middle. So while she would be doing that, my mom would just take me there just to keep me busy, keep me moving, because I was really crazy as a kid. I guess I felt guilty because she was always dragged around to all her sister's appointments. And so I made a point to get her involved in some kind of activity to wear her out, mainly. She would still, you know, try to play with me or like chase me around, like even after her injury. So I'm sure that I, it was like a distraction for her during her injury, which is like ironic because then and during my injuries that she was like a really big help and like a distraction for me. Come on, Peter, you got this. Come on. Go, Peter. I went for my last pass and I felt a pop in my knee and instantly I'm like, that was my ACL. Like I knew I tore my ACL. She went through maybe two weeks of being down and depressed about it and just thought that her chances of going on and doing gymnastics in college was not gonna happen. I went into a really dark period of my life where I was very upset because when you're a gymnast, that's like your whole life, that's almost your identity. And after I tore that, I couldn't do gymnastics for about nine months. It felt like five years for me and every day, I I didn't know what kind of mood Megan was gonna be in. I had been really upset for those like two weeks straight. And I just kept telling my mom, like, I just wanna quit. I just wanna give up. I just wanna quit. I looked at her and I just said, then quit, Megan. Just quit. It's okay, you can. And that's when it hit me, I'm like, no, I, I can't, I'm not gonna quit. No one's gonna tell me to quit, like I'm gonna keep going. It just felt right, like it felt like I wasn't done yet, just ending my career with an injury. Finally, after nine months, the doctor had cleared me to start doing gymnastics related activity. And this time was really hard because I basically had to start over. It felt like I'd never even done gymnastics before. She had plenty of time to, to get back where she was and, and get her skills and, um, you know, so it didn't, it didn't rattle our commitment to, you know, wanting her on the team and wanting her to be here. Only a small percentage of people can get back into doing the, their sport after that type of injury. Megan was that small percentage that was going to go on. Started competing bars and beam again and that gave me a little bit of hope that, okay, I'm finally getting back to where I was. Gymnastics in college is gonna be a possibility again. She had the the personal fortitude to, to make it through an injury. My family really helped me get through that, especially my mom and my sister. She's definitely one of my biggest supporters when it comes to the sport. She would remind me, you're good, you keep going with it even when it was hard. And honestly, I just owe it to her. The main focus of when I was coming back was bars because I didn't have to use my legs. So I really worked on bars. I really tried to work on improving my form, improving my handstands, and just working every little thing that I could. It was a really fun journey watching Teeter from the start of her freshman year all the way through um, to the end. You know, I think that 
Um, she was already a great athlete. She was already a great teammate, but that turnaround was, was even bigger. That was exponential growth. So going into like the last meets of season, I kind of knew I was in the running for regionals, but I didn't really think about it because I was just focusing on the team going. I, I had no doubts that, that regionals was gonna be in her future. Once I found out that I made it to regionals, I was really excited. Regionals was a lot of fun. It was just a really good opportunity to go out there and represent Ball State, especially in front of other teams like Oklahoma and Mizzou, and it was just a lot of fun. I'm definitely happy that I came to Ball State. I think it was one of the best decisions I could have made for myself. One of my goals is just to be a good leader for everybody. The nature of her being who she is, you know, she was able to help lead the team and get everybody on board. I don't think it's gonna be the exact same as it was this year. Um, my, my hope is that she's able to take her gifts and teach other people. The next couple years are gonna be really, really exciting for Megan Teeter. I hope that I can lead our team into like even more success that we had this year.